Hello, student. This is Dr. Fezan Mirza. Um, today, I'm discussing a question in which the reaction time was investigated by a group of students. Um, and the procedure is shown to you in this figure. And this question deals with t-test as well and uh, categoric variables as well. So uh, this question came in May, June 2019, the first variant of paper five, which is 51. So the, the information given in the question is that there are six students who carried out an experiment to determine the reaction time using a ruler. Now, what procedure were they using? Figure, show, figure 1.1 shows the basic procedure used for the experiment. There's a student B and there's a student A. The student A is having the finger and the thumb aligned in this way. The student B is holding the uh, ruler in such a way that the ruler is about to be dropped. This is the point which is zero on the scale. Then one, two, three, four, you can see the numbers mentioned here on this scale. And at the moment, the scale is at zero, just above the finger of this, this, this student. This student B will drop this ruler and the student A will have to catch it. The student catches it. The point at which the student catches it is the distance, which is noted and it is added to the formula here. The formula is provided to you. And in this formula, if you compute these values, you get the reaction time. The student worked in pairs, the student A rested their hand on a bench. A student B then dropped the ruler from a set height. The student A had to catch the ruler as quickly as possible. The student the ruler had dropped was measured and recorded. The student calculated the reaction time using the formula. G value was 9.8 meter per second squared. Now, table one, tip point show, 1.1 1 .1 shows the results of six students. There are six students in total. The distance the ruler dropped, they asked you to calculate one value of reaction time. Just use the formula and the value of 0 0.08 that you can get the answer. Your answer should be in two decimal places because all the values provided to you are in two decimal places. Predict what would happen if the reaction to the reaction time of the ruler was held higher than the original step, original set height. Reaction time, reaction time would take longer because it is being held a bit above than it initially was. Or you can say it's maybe unchanged. It can't decrease. Reaction time cannot decrease because it's an, in, it's an in, the innate property how you respond. Just by moving the scale up and down, you cannot increase, you cannot decrease the reaction time. Okay. Yes, if the if the if the if the experiment is repeated multiple times and the person then practices uh, catching it multiple times, then eventually the reaction time may decrease slightly and the person may start to respond a bit quicker. There was some background noise in the classroom when the student carried out their investigation. The student thought that this noise might have affected the reaction time. They decided to modify the original experiment to find out the presence or absence of background noise affects the reaction time. Identify the dependent variable. So what is the dependent, dependent variable? The dependent variable, the distance the ruler drops. In the presence of the noise and the absence of the noise, the independent variable would have been the presence or the absence of the noise. And the distance the ruler drops will be the, will be the dependent variable here. Using the procedure shown in figure 1.1, .1, describe method the student should use to find out if the presence or absence of the background noise, which is your independent variable, affects the reaction time, which is the dependent variable, indirectly calculated by using the distance ruler drops. So distance ruler drops is the dependent variable, which reflects the reaction time. Your method should be set in logical order and detail enough. So again, you will mention the variable, you will mention the procedure, you will mention the safety, and you will mention the reliability. So what variables should, what I've already discussed the variables here. Now what will be your, what can be your uh, outcome here? So you can make different drops of individuals who, uh, who since this, is, this experiment is being done on human subjects, so your subjects should be divided into equal groups and equal and both genders should be included. And, uh, and, 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 and also, for example, you, if, you have, if you have 20 of each, you have 20 males and you have 20 females and these 20 females and 20 males are uh, are then are actually uh, uh, performing the experiment in in absence of noise. Then there are twenty male and another twenty female who are who are actually are performing this in the presence of noise. So this gives you n of uh, of twenty twenty and me forty male and forty female twenty twenty each in each group. So uh, what do you do? Um, you will uh, if take a consent from the subjects because the consent is required. Since they are human subject, they should have a right to withdraw if they want. Um, they must not have taken any kind of uh, any kind of stimulant, any caffeine or alcohol, a depressant uh, that may that may affect their uh, activity. They should uh, they, uh, they they all should be tested in isolation. The room should be padded. The room should be padded so it is uh, it is uh, it is soundproof. So there is no external sound there. 
and uh, uh, all the all these all these subjects should be tested as i already mentioned in isolation they will set and from a set height they, the person will drop the ruler and the uh, and the reaction time will be noted by using the same formula in the absence of noise this experiment should be done in complete silence so there is no sound there and when the experiment is being repeated for sound and when noise then a certain decibels can be can be added for example just a state unknown number of decibel or sound that will be produced in that padded room uh, a controlled amount of sound that will be the noise there and how the individuals start to respond to that sound uh, how how the reaction time affects in the presence of that sound uh, furthermore you need to be you need to make sure that uh, the, the the subjects they do not suffer from any neurological disorder they do not suffer from any uh, any kind of uh, illness and uh, they should uh, they should be um, they should be tested uh, uh, one after the other and in the same time in the on the same time for example if you are using 10 am or daytime then all the subjects should be tested in daytime if you are using evening time then all the should, all of them should be tested in the evening time obviously this won't, this will take more than one day more one day so yes uh, the the study will last multiple days but this is how this can be done and uh, uh, the the sound that is that is being produced should stay constant, and all the subjects should uh, should perform this task accordingly. And the duration time is noted. So uh, as far as the safety and reliability is concerned, so since you are taking a large sample size, you are taking both genders, you can calculate the mean reaction time in the presence of noise, in the absence of noise, in males and in females separately. So that will give you uh, data, and you can calculate standard deviations as well. So that will uh, that actually will remove the anomalous reading. So you will include the safety and reliability there. And since the, the person is not in, not having any diagnostic disorder, no hearing illness or something like that, so that covers the safety aspect as well. Furthermore, what you can do in this investigation, uh, for example, since you are using human subjects, they all should be of the similar ethnicity. They should be of the same ethnicity. They should belong to the same ethnic group. Uh, they should have the similar body mass index. They should have the similar body mass and height. Um, all of them should be using their same hand. For example, it should need to be standardized. All of them maybe should be using their their dominant hand for this experiment or their right hand. Something needs to be uh, standardized, <laughs> and that needs sorry, and that needs to be kept consistent for the whole uh, experiment. Then, furthermore, uh, Figure One Point Three shows the results of the reaction time the students were found on the internet. Absence of noise, presence of noise. You can see. This is called categoric data. Why is it called categoric data? Because the data is in two categories. One category is where the noise was absent, and one was in which the noise was present. So uh, the mean reaction time is shown to you. They are saying this was on the, on the internet, and the reaction time was higher in the absence of noise and the presence of noise. The uh, this 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 is study or this uh, thing on internet tells that the student responded much faster. So state why a bar chart is suitable way to compare the data because it is a categoric data. It is discontinuous data. Discontinuous variables are there and it is uh, all in categories. So you can uh, you can very well use the bar chart to show the the uh, distribution of the values. So just by a conclusion that the student could have made from these results in the presence of noise, mean reaction time is shorter. You just note these values from here and you can uh, just include it in your answer accordingly. Furthermore, it says the student decided to carry out a t-test to find out the difference the reaction time was significant state. Why t-test was suitable? T-test is used for continuous data. It shows whether the difference in the mean of paired data is significant or not. Something that we have already discussed. It stated a null hypothesis for this test. There is no significant difference in the mean reaction time with or without noise. Because when you are using null hypothesis, you state there is no significant. If you are using the difference in the mean, that the mean difference, difference in the mean, or accordingly, you just uh, change the uh, statement. Table 1.2 shows the probability of values of t. So degree of freedom uh, is told to you the student used 16 degrees of freedom, and the probability of 0.05 was taken. The calculated value of t was 2.05, and the critical value comes out to be 2.12. So if the t value calculated is 2.05, so in this case, your t value is actually less than the critical value. So if the t value is less than the critical value, it means that the difference is there, but the difference in the Bohr group is not significant. It's only due to chance. Furthermore, another student then went out to carry out another experiment uh, from figure 1.1. Notice that more repetitions carried out 
the faster the reaction time became. The student decided to carry out different react in experiment to investigate the effect of repetition on the accuracy of carrying out a task. So the task is being carried out, number of repetition uh, is being increased. So accuracy will increase as well. That was the student, this was the student assumption. Five students D, W, X, Y, Z were tested. Each student was given a picture of a star as shown in figure 1.4. Each student sat on the desk so that the star was only visible in the mirror as shown in figure 1.5. So this is a double line star. The student sits in such a way that only the reflection of the star can be seen. The direct view of the star is blocked. Each student was asked to draw a line between the double lines of the star when looking only in the mirror. Figure 1.6 shows the star diagram completed by a student. The student record the number of times their line went, lines went outside the double lines of the star. So this is how the students uh, ended up drawing their lines. So every time the line went out, it was counted as an error. And this was counted, uh, uh, repeat, uh, this was repeated many times to see how many errors are being carried out uh, continuously by the students. Each student repeat the task nine times. So nine times it was repeated in the table. You can see these nine values show to you the number of repeats. The results are shown in table 1.3, V, W, X, Y, Z. There are a total of one, two, three, four, five students who are and who are actually are taking this test who actually are appearing this in this this investigation you can see the uh, the student v uh, uh, actually ended up with 48 errors then 48 errors 46 44 you can see the errors decreased upon repetition w again as the it, it student progress the uh, the the task was done better it it stands good for almost every subject Identify the independent variable here. The independent variable is the number of repeats. Again, for the independent variable, you just refer to the cause. So the cause is number of repeats. The more the repeats, the accurate the task gets. So there's the hypothesis that was tested in the experiments. The repetition of a task significantly increases the accuracy of the task. So in the same question, they have asked you hypothesis, and previously they asked you the null hypothesis as well. So you should know how to frame a hypothesis. You should know how to frame a null hypothesis, provided with the information in any question. A person walked into the room and started talking to one of the students who was carrying out the task circle other the results table 120 that was affected by this. So if you look at this, you can see that the student Y was performing pretty well. All the values are in the range of 30s and 29s and 31, and suddenly it becomes 44. This is too big a jump. This is too big a jump. And then again, the student comes back and performs better. So this value must be the one that you will encircle. Why? Because this student is the one who actually was affected by a person who uh, interrupted the task. Student Y, student already had a lower errors even in the first trial. So that will be your explanation there. Straight to conclusion based on the data in table 1.3 repeated allows more accurate results. However, the number of errors do not continue to decrease. You can see that the student V at the seventh repeat is getting 41. But 8, 9, again, he or she is getting 41. So this is the best the student could do. So repetition will not keep on decreasing the uh, errors to an infinity. Obviously, a time will come when the errors will become minimized and they cannot get better anymore or any further. So this is what you will state there. Repeated values, uh, repeated repetition uh, improves the task, but then eventually uh, it uh, will not keep on decreasing forever. This was a big question for 21 marks and uh, it included a very interesting investigation i hope this uh, explanation of mine was helpful for you what i should what i would recommend right now you see for that you should just try to attend this by yourself now so that you know what were you able to comprehend from my video that's it from my side thank you so much